Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing Brown Dwarfs, and I guess more specifically, a discovery of something somewhat unusual around one of the nearby Brown Dwarfs, something that one day might help us find potentially habitable planets out there. And in this case, it's a discovery of what seems to be an enormous magnetic field that seems to be producing ridiculously powerful aurora, or northern lights. Way, way more powerful than anything we've seen on planet Earth, and even more powerful than anything we've seen anywhere in the solar system. And so let's actually talk about the discovery and why it's kind of important when it comes to looking for this around habitable planets. But I guess first, a quick reminder. We've actually only started learning about brown dwarfs and started discovering so many of them in the last couple of decades. Unlike a typical star, a brown dwarf is extremely difficult to see, mostly because it's technically not a star. An average brown dwarf produces way less heat, and so it's only visible using infrared frequencies. And it was the earlier infrared telescopes, such as NASA's WISE spacecraft that you see right here, that suddenly was able to discover a bunch of brown dwarfs all over the place. And more intriguingly, some of the closest objects to the solar system are brown dwarfs as well. For example, Lumen 16, a binary brown dwarf system that was already investigated several times, and that we discussed in detail in one of the videos in the description. But brown dwarfs are a lot similar to planets than they are to stars. And specifically, they're more similar to gas giants like Jupiter. And because of this, a lot of scientists made an assumption that some of these objects would also have very powerful magnetic fields. Mostly because we know Jupiter and Saturn have one as well. As a matter of fact, Jupiter has the most powerful magnetic field of all of the planets. And since magnetic fields are essential for survival of life on planet Earth, the scientists believe that being able to find magnetic fields around exoplanets is one of the more important skills in order to discover some kind of an exoplanet out there that could potentially sustain life. Or in other words, the scientists want to perfect their skills in their ability to detect magnetic fields around distant objects. For example, one of the main investigations when it comes to exoplanets such as the ones in TRAPPIST-1 system is actually trying to figure out if those planets around red dwarfs contain any magnetic field at all. At the moment, there is actually no technique that can help us answer any of these questions. But that's pretty much what this study is about. The scientists decided to focus on this brown dwarf because we know that it seems to have something going on around it, and the scientists wanted to detect not just the aurora that should be visible, but the magnetic fields and also various types of plasma that should be formed as a result of these powerful fields. And this is actually an object that back in 2015 was discovered to possess very powerful aurora. It's a brown dwarf that's about 19 light years away from us, and it seems to be about 55 masses of Jupiter. The scientists refer to these objects as ultra-cool brown dwarfs, and these are usually objects that are massive enough to even fuse lithium, producing even more heat. But because no lithium seems to be present around this brown dwarf, today the scientists assume that it's most likely extremely young, possibly only about 20 million years old. But it seems to be an extremely active object, and seems to possess huge magnetic fields, with some of the first discoveries coming from this object being those aurora that I mentioned previously. And these were ridiculously powerful. They must have been at least one million times brighter than anything we ever see on Earth. And that's actually somewhat difficult to imagine. I mean, to some extent it would look like really, really bright red light. Or this super bright red glow coming from the northern region of the planet. And in this case it's red because of hydrogen. On Earth, aurora are formed by the interaction of nitrogen and oxygen, but these brown dwarfs mostly contain hydrogen in the upper atmosphere, and so the ionization of hydrogen would produce extremely bright red light. But the problem is, nobody actually knows what's causing this. We don't really know what's producing these aurora. So for example, when it comes to Jupiter, the aurora visible here are the result of the interaction with the moon Io. For Earth, it's really the interaction with the solar particles. But in these unusual brown dwarfs, it's not entirely clear. Some scientists have even suggested that maybe, as the brown dwarf emits some of the solar winds from its surface, the electrons from this wind might be recaptured and produce aurora by themselves. Other scientists suggested that this is maybe a sign that there are planets or, I guess, moons. But whatever is the case, this particular brown dwarf is extremely unusual. But in order to discover all of this, the scientists created a kind of a virtual telescope similar to the one used to create the image of the first black hole. They basically used 39 telescopes combined together in order to create high-resolution images in radio frequencies. In the end, producing something that looks like this. Now, this might not look like much, 
until you put identification on each of these features. And so essentially we're observing a really bright aurora and what seems to be a radiation belt. A radiation belt produced by the very powerful magnetosphere as it accelerates particles to near the speed of light, forming something like this. Now on Earth we call these Van Allen's belts, but they basically exist around every object that has magnetosphere. The ones around Jupiter are obviously much much stronger and are actually sort of deadly to any life that might decide to come too close. As a matter of fact, the Juno mission that sometimes passes through them has to be really careful in order to avoid the destruction of certain instruments due to the extreme power of these belts. But once again on Jupiter, this is mostly the result of interaction with Io. And on Earth, it's the interaction with the solar particles. With the solar particles then being trapped around Earth, creating the belts that you see. But the belts around this object are absolutely ridiculous. They seem to be approximately 10 million times brighter than the ones around Jupiter. And so their origin and what exactly is responsible for such a tremendous power is of course a mystery. Especially because this seems to be one of the few such brown dwarfs detected so far. But it's really the discovery itself that's really the most essential part. By being able to connect the radiation belt with the brightness of Aurora, the scientists can now start to figure out the overall strength of the magnetic field in order to start making predictions about the strength, the shape and other important properties of magnetic fields around terrestrial planets. In order to one day predict the potential habitability of terrestrial planets, if we also detect various radio frequencies that are basically coming from aurora or northern lights. Or in other words, by observing a certain planet, for example the ones in TRAPPIST-1, and by seeing radio frequencies coming from these planets as well, the scientists can then start making conclusions about the overall strength of the magnetic field and whether it protects the planets from powerful solar radiation. So far no such planet has been found and no emissions like this have been seen from terrestrial planets, but hopefully by using similar techniques in the future we might see some. Especially once more telescopes become available, such as for example the next generation very large array that's going to be way more powerful than anything else we have. But I guess when it comes to this object, there's just too many mysteries. Not only why it has such a magnetic field, but what's even producing it. On Earth we believe it's the molten iron core. On Jupiter it's most likely very highly pressurized hydrogen that becomes metallic in certain conditions. For objects like our Sun, in this case it's probably the ionized hydrogen located in certain upper regions. But because the magnetic field here is so extreme, its origin has no explanation. Which probably means that we're going to be coming back and talking more about this once the scientists figure out what's going on here. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.